the self-centered, greed-driven culture has resulted in an epidemic of dishonesty and deception. It's everywhere in every facet of life around us in our culture. Listen to what Dr. Woodrow Kroll writes, and I quote, we live in a society of cheaters, a society of people who routinely deceive others because they are selfish and they want what's best for them. If it means lying to the government, stealing from their company, or cheating on their exams, so be it. The important element is taking care of oneself, end of quote. I hope you realize, though, that selfishness, dishonesty, deception is not something new to the 21st century. It's been going on for quite some time. Maybe it's more prevalent and maybe more blatant than ever before, but it's certainly not new. A reason being is because of the truth found in uh, Jeremiah chapter 17. Do you remember this verse? The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You see, our old, wicked, Adamic nature has always had the capability of doing some of the most dishonest and the most deceptive things you could ever imagine. You say, what in the world does all this have to do with the life of Jacob? Because if there were a few things that Jacob was known for, it would have been the fact that he was very selfish, he was very dishonest, and he was very deceptive. Now, I want to read a story to you. It's a lengthy story. And I thought about reading just a few of the verses, but then I thought, no, it's Super Bowl Sunday night. I want to keep you as long as I can. No, I, I didn't think that at all. I just thought I wanted you to get the whole story. All right, so I'm going to read the entire chapter of Genesis 27. And I want you to follow along in your Bible. If you didn't bring a Bible, verses will appear on the screen. But I want you to get the story. And while I read this chapter, I want you to think of those three things. Think of those three things. You say, what three things? Selfishness, dishonesty, and being deceptive. I want you to think about those three things. We're reading the Bible here. <laughs> We're reading a story about a great Old Testament patriarch, Jacob. It's all here. I want you to listen to this story. Chapter 27, verse 1. And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau, his eldest son, and said unto him, My son... And he said unto him, Behold, here am I. And he said, Behold now, I am old, I know not the day of my death. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver and thy bow, and go out to the field and take me some venison. And make me savory meat, such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. And Rebekah heard when Isaac spake to Esau his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. And Rebekah spake unto Jacob, her son, it's interesting how it's his son, her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau thy brother, saying, Bring me venison and make me savory meat that I may eat and bless thee before the Lord before my death. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. Go now to the flock and fetch me from thence two good kids of the goats, and I will make thee savory meat for thy father, such as he loveth. And thou shalt bring it to thy father, that he may eat, and that he may bless thee before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Behold, Esau my brother is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. Uh, my father peradventure will fill me, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver. Well, he was a deceiver, wasn't he? <laughs> and I shall bring a curse upon me and not a blessing. And his mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse, my son. Only obey my voice and go fetch me them. 
And he went and fetched and brought them to his mother, and his mother made savory meat such as his father loved. And Rebekah took goodly raiment of her eldest son Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them upon Jacob her younger son. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. And she gave the savory meat and the bread and she, uh, that which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. And he came unto his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, who art thou, my son? And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. Can we say dishonesty? There, do you see it? I have done according as thou madest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. Now he's bringing God into his dishonest behavior. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. It sounds like Isaac had his doubts. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, because his hands were hairy as his brother Esau's hands, so he blessed him. And he said, Art thou my very son Esau? And he said, What? I am. What is he doing there? Lying. It really ties into this morning's message too, does it not? The value of truth. Obviously, Jacob did not value the truth. And he said, bring it near to me and I will eat of my son's venison that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him and he did eat and he brought him wine and he drank. And his father Isaac said unto him, come near now and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him and he smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said, see the smell of my son is as the smell of the field which the Lord hath blessed. Therefore, God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fat of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be every one that curseth thee and blessed be he that blesseth thee. And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end to blessing Jacob, and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau his brother came in from his hunting. And he also had made, made savory meat and brought it unto his father and said unto his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's venison, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac his father said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy firstborn Esau. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he that hath taken venison and brought it to me? And I have eaten of all before thou camest and have blessed him. Yea, and he shall be blessed. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. And he said, Thy brother came with subtlety and hath taken away thy blessing. And he said, Is not he rightly named Jacob? Do you remember what his name meant? His name meant supplanter, the deceiver the one who defrauds others. And he said, is not he rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he hath taken away my blessing. And he said, hast thou not reserved a blessing for me? And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, behold, I have made him thy Lord. Uh, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants. And with corn and wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. 
And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword shalt thou live and shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the day Days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. Make a mental note. Nothing good comes from selfishness. And these words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Rebekah. And she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said unto him, Behold, thy brother Esau, as touching thee, doth comfort himself, purposing to kill thee. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice and arise. Flee thou to Laban, thy brother, to Haran, and tarry with him a few days until thy brother's fury turn away, until thy brother's anger turn away from thee, and he forget that that which thou hast done to him, then will I send and fetch thee from thence. Why should I be deprived also of you both in one day? And Rebekah said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob take a wife of the daughters of Heth, such as these which are of the daughters of the land, what good shall my life do me? Now, I know that was a long chapter to read, 46 verses, but you got the big picture, did you not? You got the bird's eye view of everything that took place. Now, when we started reading those verses, did I not tell you to think about what? Selfishness, deception, and dishonesty. Would you agree with me that this chapter is full of selfishness, dishonesty, and deception? Would you agree? I mean, it's all over this chapter. The depth of deception, the depth of dishonesty that takes place in this story, I believe is doubly worse when you consider the fact that all this was taking place within a family. Within a family. They are not strangers. They are not just acquaintances. They are not even friends. This all happens between a father a mother, and their two sons who happen to be twin brothers. 